So the awakened brand and you couldn't pay him a trillion dollars to get him dressed. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting that dot. Like, wow, all these brothers gotta wear a dress. What we gonna do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. And I guess this is a, a photograph from the first show. <laughs> yes. Explain what we're looking at there. and That's a, a thing I wanted to do, but the NBC censors cut it out. Yeah. And uh, I, I was standing there, I say, as you can see, and you only see me from the waist, just this part. So right. You, as you can see, I've given up absolutely nothing to be on television. <laughs> and they pull back, and you can see I and, have no genitals. And there you are, yeah. Richard Pryor dressed up as a woman in the 1986 film Jojo Dancer, Your Life is Calling. His fourth comedy and most successful is called The Devil Made Me Buy the Stress. Coincidence? It was also his most successful piece of work, winning his Grammy and Golden Record status. His character was put together by Wilson, his manager Kay, and NBC executives. Wesley played a drag queen in Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, the production company, NBC. He played a drag queen in the movie, Holiday Heart. It. That's a big difference. I think that's the biggest difference. There's, not, there's no man with a dress on in this one. Nothing wrong with that. He dressed up as a woman on the TV show The Fresh Prince of Bel Air while working for Quincy Jones and NBC. I'm like, wow, all these brothers gotta wear a dress. This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because. There's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And, it, huh? What? The prostitute? Nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. That should have been in the discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every every minute your waist costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, now I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? You know, we're going like this. And then finally he's like, ah, and he, he leaves, and then like the director comes, Dave, it really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this, a uh, broke back mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> like, wear the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes, come on, David, would be so 
great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress, I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later, the whole new scene, how, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? You know, it's like, so you got to take it. Dave Chappelle, another great comedian said that, you know, in the industry, they tried to make him wear a dress. Have you ever ran into that with, with scripts? And, <laughs> and is that something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for? Uh, I definitely have ran into to put on the dress. I don't think anyone saw this one coming. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have, you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to be challenged, so you know, I don't have to speak on them. I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. I you look said good no to that. <laughs> Not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. You know, at the end of the day, you got to know that you're a brand. I'm yeah. a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, your your brand can be diminished, and and you don't you don't want that to happen. So you know, protecting my brand is is definitely a priority. Um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. <laughs> so now I'm saying, why are we picking old poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. Okay. Some of us are against the Illuminati. and We are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. End quote. Um, we all love Dave Chappelle. Exactly. Dave Chappelle has never been a part of the Illuminati. They don't want him or me or people like us. Yeah. Um, but now, it's not uh, necessary for us to store up that hornet's nest unless we intend to get stung a million times. I didn't understand that. They had to sting me a million times. Yeah. I'm still not going to join, but I respect it a little more. is lifting her arms into her signature... I'll tell you what happened, but I can't say it directly. There's a book to me that encapsulates my entire experience before I left the show. And the book is called Pimp, written by a black American who was a pimp in the 40s. He describes in detail how these men break women so that they will give them the money that they make with their own bodies. Because, uh, you know, when you're a guy that generates money, yeah. people have a vested interest in controlling. There's a story in here so cold it makes me shudder to think about it. Well, Iceberg Slim is trying to control the woman that he finds uncontrollable. I would go to work on the show and I felt awful every day. I felt like some kind of prostitute or something. Like, if I feel so bad, why I keep showing up to this place? So he asked older pimp how he can rein her in. And the older pimp says, oh, that's easy, Iceberg. All you have to do is beat that bitch with a coat hanger. I feel like in a, in a lot of instances, I was deliberately being put through stress. And then run her a bath and give her some pills. They were trying to get me to take psychotic medication. She'll be so grateful that you fixed her that she'll forget you were the motherfucker that beat her in the first place. I forgot the, the hostility of the environment of show business. Yeah, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe these rapes aren't even the worst of it. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Now, the end of this book, Iceberg Slim tells a story. It's kind of the crescendo of the book. Iceberg Slim's bottom bitch is at the end of a mileage. She was bubbling. You could see it. She was going crazy. He had to let her go. It's hard to let a, go, a, a bottom bitch go. And he wasn't ready to let her go because his organization couldn't handle losing her. The DVD's released. And it sets all these incredible records. You know, it wasn't like Comedy Central was a hot place to be when I showed up there. He said, okay, there's a guy in that hotel across the street. He's waiting for you in room number seven. Once you go over there, and I want you to fuck him. 
But before you do, I need you to put some of this stuff in this drink. I slipped a small vial of mineral oil into her palm. I told her it was chloral hydrate. Only two drops would knock the sucker out. She said, oh, I, I did everything you said, but, but that man don't look right. He, something wrong, daddy. Said, what do you mean something's wrong, bitch? Did you put that stuff in this drink? She said, I did everything you said, daddy. I put all of it in this drink. He said, wait a minute, bitch. Wait a minute. You put all of it in this drink? I knelt beside him, blocking her view with my back. I wiped my brow and turned my face toward her. My eyes were wide in alarm. I said, baby. He's dead, I think. All right, bitch, let me think. <sighs> I can fix this for you. She squeezed tightly against me. I kept telling her she had nothing to worry about. After all, we were together for life, and her secret would always be safe with me. She found out about the hoax years later. That's how the whole shit works, ladies. You understand? This bitch was at the end of a mileage. She was at 498. She ended up tricking for Iceberg for another six months. She must have turned another 200 tricks for him. Do you understand? You know, like the whore that they turned us into. I jumped on that plane and left my father's bedside, which I regret to this day. And I went out and I sat with these people in this room. And if you could You gotta make them hump hard and fast to stick them for the long scratch quick. So slim. Be as sweet as the scratch, no sweeter. And always stick a whore for a bundle before you sex her. A whore ain't nothing but a trick to a pimp. Everything went wrong. It's like everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. That bit was already overdone. You know, it was like it was hacky, you know, and I did it for, I did it purely for the money and the work of Martin Lawrence. Yeah. So I didn't do it for the purity of comedy, but I did it for the purity of work with Martin. But I believe that. It wasn't, it was still more than money. Like, damn, I'm gonna get a big check, you know. Yeah. It was Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brandon, Brandon, don't wear a dress. <laughs> you know, he called you or is this? No, he was saying it in the media, so I thought he was heck. Cat Williams has a theory that he goes around telling everybody, you know, Cat doesn't hold his tongue, that every single funny black man, they make you wear a dress. But Cat doesn't think it's funny. He thinks it's emasculating and demeaning to black people. And Brandon's taking it personally, because, well, you know. <laughs> right. Don't give me that about I wore a dress. Yeah, you wore a pants. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, just trying to make it. Why are you bashing me? I think the dress, personally... Uh, is a thing that was, 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 was not in our culture to do. And I think everybody will want to put their culture on us. And no, not to hate your culture or your God. Mm -hmm. If your God say you can put on a dress and your culture is normal for you, that you have the right as a human to choose that. But me, for my God and my culture, my ancient culture, we just never, we didn't do stuff like that. Yeah. So, I was cursed by it. I believe it was a curse that went with that, personally. Because nothing went right since then. That's truthful. No one can tell me, hey, man, you think it's too much, man. You see that, man? Can't. Everything went wrong. It's like everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. I tell you, I lived it. Yeah. Is there any, like, uh... Even with Martin, things went wrong when he did it, too. Because Martin is very anointed. Martin is a very okay. strong man. And Stacey Chappelle said that, too. He said things about that, too. And something, if you look at Martin's Arsenio Hall interviews, you look at him now, something's changed. You know? Yeah, well, Martin, uh, I, I noticed it's that, It's not too. a shot, but something's changed. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it's a spiritual thing, but I, everyone has their own journey. Were you ever asked, you know, ever had a role where you were going to dress like a, you know, dress like a woman in that role had you accepted it no I, it was it was a part of a comedy uh i was doing a um a sitcom and it was just a quick suggestion i'm like i'm kid i'm, I'm not doing that and it, oh, okay cool it was <laughs> my manager knows don't even send me in for no shit that involves something that i'm not morally comfortable with mainly playing some sort of homosexual slash transvestite whatever the case may be you know i'm not with it there's plenty of other people that are with it and i probably get less calls because of that 
See what I'm saying? My phone probably doesn't ring as much as it would if I would say, put me in the game, coach. I'm ready to do whatever. If Hollywood started off on a fair foot, okay? If blacks and whites all started off on a fair thing, like black men, white men, black women, white women, Asian, if we all started off on a fair and equal basis, and it wasn't this like white in superiority against black inferiority, it wasn't this suppressive shit, maybe you go, you know what? Because Jack Lemon, you know, famous actor Jack Lemon, um, Milton Berle, they all dressed up as women. It was funny. It was funny shit. Flip Wilson, famous black comedian from the 70s, did Geraldine. He killed it. He had his own show. He played different characters. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. Started out all, as Wanda. And for me, I think a lot of black men have done it out of wanting to get to the next level. That's my opinion. I can't do that shit. I'm not doing it because to me, you know, they always say, but you're an actor. I go, yeah. Like when they say, hey, would you play a gay role? I go, most of the time when you play a gay role, it's just to shut down black mis masculinity. It's to shut it down, to kill the alpha because alpha mass, black masculinity has always been a threat to white, the white majority. It always has been. You know, in white families, they say, don't you, don't, you better not date no goddamn nigga. You know, a lot of Latin families get like that. The black masculinity has always been scared. But I noticed that everybody that has gotten to the top has put on a dress. And the motherfuckers that don't put on a dress, it's always this resistance and shit like that. And when they say a gay role, I go, hey, I'm not even homophobic at all. Why don't you give that role to a gay black actor who actually has the nuances of being gay, yeah. who's not buffooning his community, who actually understands what it's like to be gay. Give it to them. They're unemployed. Dave Chappelle has famously said he will never go in drag for comedy. He'll never dress up like a woman. Do you feel the same way? I feel the same way 100%. I had an experience where I auditioned for this, that movie, Holiday Heart. I didn't get it, so I auditioned in a dress. I was like, I will never repeat that. So I would have to say I agree, support, and will follow Dave Chappelle's lead in saying, I will never dress in drag for Hollywood, for anybody. But if I were to get that role, no, I'm just criminal charge. There is a systematic effort to destroy every black male entertainment's entertainer's image. They want us all to have an actress by name. Kobe raped a white woman in Colorado. Dr. Cosby raped 37 bitches and is still counting. Nobody leaves this business clean. Michael Jackson fucked little white children. Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan gambled. Mm. Right, and then his dad got killed. And you understand? They tried to tie that. You're in. not going to die clean. I mean, 